Heresy from the Emperor's point of view. Pretty much this. The Emperor was born in 8000 BC, somewhere around Anatolia, likely to be Neverly Cori and the nearby temple of Gebekla Tepe. He's the living reincarnation of hundreds or more shaman elders, and probably has their souls shouting at him the whole time. He has no fixed appearance, and basically unlimited power to all practical extent. He hid out, probably under the insistence of his shaman fathers for thousands of years, taking a backseat and watching, learning and sometimes guiding as humanity staggers its way into the future. Fuck up by fuck up. Everyone he knows is born and dies in the blink of an eye. He has no peers, no equals, nobody who can even comprehend what he is. Do you know how when you're a kid, 10 minutes seems like forever, and at 30, 2 days is right on top of you? You can probably remember yesterday in full, probably most of the last week. What do you remember from when you were 10? Flashes and highlights, probably an hour's worth altogether. Now compound that out 38,000 years so he has trouble forming relationships, because he has absolutely nothing in common with anyone, and they all just keep dying all the time. That's what comes of being the new man, but he's got all those dead shamans living inside him, and they're steering him towards the good. He's passive, most of the time, because he's seen enough and knows enough that a giant golden immortal leader stepping forwards at most points in history, would damage humanity's development more than help it. The human race needs to find its own way forwards, build itself up, and it does, all the way to the heavens themselves. 25,000 years of growth and prosperity, the colonization of the galaxy, humanity's rising star, and then the age of strife hits. Old Knight, the gestation of Slanesh, worlds are cut off, sickers spring up like weeds, artificial intelligences go haywire. The whole thing unravels so then this immortal takes on the mantle of the emperor, fashions himself a radiant golden form, and steps in. Because if he remained passive, there wouldn't be a human race left. He wrests control of terror, unifies the world and breaks down the ideologies that inevitably throw up barriers between subgroups, religions, kingdoms, nations. It all gets scrapped in the name of unification and he creates the space marines. Because if he's going to actually lead armies and rule the galaxy, he wants soldiers that can keep up to his standards somewhat, and B won't die of old age before he's even gotten started. To lead these exceptional soldiers, he needs exceptional generals, and this might just be the chance for him to have company he might be able to relate to, even slightly. So the Primarch project kicks off. The Emperor looks into the warp and makes bargains, looking for power to infuse his sons with. To bring them to a level close to his own, it goes pretty well. There's a slight hitch, and the Primarchs get scattered, but that's not too bad, and the Emperor can actually use it as a good catalyst for the whole Great Crusade thing. For 200 years he leads the Crusade personally, finding his lost Primarchs and rebuilding humanity's empire amongst the stars. He's distant, as his sons see it, both because of the aforementioned difficulties an all-powerful immortal has in forming relationships with lesser beings, and because he's got a thousand things to do at once. Twenty sons to shepherd, two of which he has to probably kill and two others who he's constantly having to keep an eye on in case they need to go to. Thousands of fleets to manage, a million worlds to watch over, a court full of intrigue back home, politics shenanigans and power plays from greedy mortals who'll only be dead in a few years anyway, a hundred actual battlefields that he has to personally step onto and kill shit on a regular basis, the warps hanging over everything, and even though he's done his best to make an empire that'll have the best chance of avoiding falling into its grasp by accident a faithless society that scorns gods he knows he'll have to do something, even if only because some of the Primarchs are getting curious and in over their heads so he decides to build a webway, a human webway, alongside and within the ancient Elder webway, that would remove the reliance on the bloated and inbred navigator houses, remove the need to stare into the warp, and connect the worlds of the Imperium in a way that can resist another old knight to do that. He needs to take some time off, not long, just a couple of decades, to get the fiddly bits right. He can't just brute force it, not if he wants it to work without him. So he puts his favorite son, Horus, in the place of Warmaster, tells him to keep up the good work, but daddy's got important work to be doing. He doesn't tell anyone what important work, because, well, he's not a social genius and he honestly just thinks they don't need to know. The things they do know are getting them in enough trouble as it is. 
He spent 30,000 years unlocking the secrets of the cosmos. They can wait a decade or two for Christ's sake so he's back in the palace, probably losing track of time, and doesn't want to be disturbed then. Practically as soon as he's started from his point of view, Magnus smashes the whole project to shit talking some shit about Horus being a traitor to the Imperium, scares the peasantry shitless manifesting as a giant blazing crimson demon, and vanishes. The Emperor tells Lemon Rust to go fetch Magnus so they can have a nice, long talk about knocking before entering and before he's even gotten started on picking the pieces back up and clearing out the flood of demons that Magnus has let into terror. The news comes in from all over Horus is actually a traitor to the Imperium and has started a fucking civil war the Emperor, at this point, is likely thinking what the fuck, he's left them alone for a few fucking years, and it all goes completely to shit, leaving them alone so he can do other things than lead an army was the entire fucking point of creating the Primarchs in the first place. God damn it people. You know, I used to always be of the mind that the Emperor was just a bit of a shit dad, and making that deal with the Chaos Gods for sons is a horrible idea and would never end well. Like, you know, unless he spent so much time trying to guide them and work with them and, like, you know, um, anything he can to make sure that they turn into decent human beings. Well, not human beings, decent Primarchs. But then, like, you know, if you look at the, the entire spectrum of Primarchs, like, you know, you got someone like Gulliman who did amazingly well for himself, actually had, like, you know, human parents and shit like that. And, like, you know, he was going over a small uh, system before uh, the Emperor even finds him. And then you've got, like, you know, on the other end, you've got someone like Angron, who's got fucking genetic implants to make him go mental. You know, um, he's comp oh, he's a tortured soul, so he is. And he should have just died on that shit scene of a planet instead of getting beamed up. Um, He should have just died with his brothers. You know, same with Cruz, to be honest with you, like, look, I know 40k Batman is really cool and all that, but, like, you know, he's mentally unhinged, to say the least, like, he's straight up fucking skinning people, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, definitely unhinged, um, it was, it was gonna happen no matter what, uh, that was the only way it was gonna happen. All I can say is, it's a bit massive pity, like, you know, the, but the whole heresy was doomed from the very start with that pact, as I say, though the heresy is really what gives 40k its grim dark feel. They were so close to greatness, you know, they were so close to their, their their day in the sun, you know, going back and, like, you know, making it, like, you know, and they could have done it, but that's, that's, that's what makes 40k, it's the grim dark elements of 40k that, you know, really bring it to life, you know what I mean? Do, am I making any sense? I don't know, but I really do think that this give me a big, like, you know, a definitely a massive different perspective on the Emperor and how I judge him and how he perceives things, you know what I mean, because he isn't human, and he is completely different, and he's alienated from everyone, and it, he, he definitely, definitely, um, communication skills are not the Emperor's strong suit, even if he is, like, the Emperor of Mankind and all that. But no, um, also, if you're wondering about the background, the Emperor not give me this background, um, I'll give you a link to his YouTube channel down below. He also does, like, commission artwork and stuff like that, so, like, you know, definitely something to check out. Um, he makes, like, wee... 40k animations and all that, so like, you know, I think it's something to check out, I think his stuff's pretty good, so uh, if you had the chance to check that out afterwards, though, look, as always, I hope you guys have enjoyed, click that wee notification bell, subscribe, all that other good shit, and look, I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay, this needs to stop now, this is cancer, this this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?